Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to continue the London system series with King's Indian setups for black, which are the second most likely option black would go for against the London system. Therefore, a very important setup for a London system player to have something prepared against. We're going to have a look at two main ways for white to play. Uh, they're quite different, both are sound. They just lead to different kinds of positions and maybe and that would be my advice, you should incorporate both into your repertoire because really, as we saw in the last video, d5, which is the most common setup for black, and the King's Indian setup are the two most common and it's not that hard to learn both moves I'm about to show you. So, uh, by the way, for an introduction to the London system, if you haven't seen the introductory video, please do. There I go over the basic ideas of the opening, so if you are unfamiliar and just starting out with the London, uh, watch that video. Okay, so after d4 for white, black doesn't have to play d5, uh, which we covered in the last video. Black can go knight f6. And now there are quite a few setups uh, black could go for. Uh, this, of course, if white chooses to play c4, could be the king's indian, the grunfeld, several other openings, the benoni. Uh, if white continues with the move knight to f3, then again, this could be several different openings. Uh, black could go g6, black could, black could go e6, d5, c5, d6. A ton of options, even b6. Uh, so we are choosing the move bishop to f4, going into an early London system without knight to f3 to restrict black's options. And we are focusing on king's Indian type positions today. So this is the move g6. Uh, just let me show you what the king's Indian is. I'll uh, set up a new board. So the mainline king's Indian starts after the move d4 for white, knight to f6, c4 for white, the queen's gambit, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, the main line, well, uh, g6, and now after the move g6, white plays the move knight to c3, black plays the move bishop to g7, this is the king's Indian defense. Black, of course, could have gone for the Grunfeld as well, with pawn to d5, which is a setup we are going to cover in a separate video against the London system. Uh, so, uh, the king's Indian defense after the move bishop to g7, uh, the main lines are e4, d6, and basically this is the pawn structure black aims for. This is the pawn structure with pawns on d6 and g6, which is similar to what black plays in the dragon Sicilian, just with the absence of the c pawn, of course. Black also plays it in the modern defense, so the king's Indian, the dragons in the Sicilian defense, uh, the pirts and the modern, basically the same opening for black, uh, the same opening idea with the king's side fianchetto. And that's what we are going to be looking at for black against the London system as well. So many players who play the King's Indian or the Modern or the Pirates are going to try to adopt the same opening system they find comfortable against every opening. Now, what can White do against it? We are going to be looking at two options. Uh, White has two good moves here. Uh, one move is Knight to c3, sort of going against the London system. Basically, you are unable to complete the London system pawn triangle with c3, e3, uh, if you go for knight to c3, obviously. And the second move, along with knight to c3, is pawn to e3, which is in the London system fashion, and uh, more positional, slightly sounder uh, and safer for white, but also easier for black to play against. So the positions we are going to be looking at after knight to c3 are going to be mostly attacking positions. And the positions we look after pawn to e3 are going to be calmer, safer, and more London system-like. Let's start with knight to c3. Knight to c3 is the more common move, slightly more common though. Uh, both are fine. Magnus Carlsen has played e3 recently, so... That goes to show that even though knight c3 is more popular, e3 isn't any worse. It's just different. So let's explain what the move knight to c3 is about. Well, after black plays the move knight to f6 and he prepares to play the move bishop to g7, uh, it's important to understand that he's sort of leaving the center unoccupied. Of course, when black meets the London system with d5, he is already controlling the central squares c4 and d4. By playing the king's Indian setup, he's playing a modern or hyper-modern uh, type of defense, which plans to control the center with the pieces, most often diagonally with the g7 bishop, later on in the game. So white's very sensible response knight to c3 basically controls the e4 square. And if black does nothing, white's going to play e4, getting a broad center. Therefore, the main move for black is d5, uh, now transposing into a Grunfeld-type position, 
uh, in which p is controlling the e4 square and simply by using brute force stopping the move e4 from white. There is, however, an option to play the move bishop to g7, and we are going to look at that first. This is the typical king's Indian move, and some consider this move to be a mistake. Uh, I think it's just a different position if black goes for bishop to g7 uh, and allows the move e4. Obviously, there is no better move here for white. So after the move e4, black has taken up the center. He has a broad center, which is very powerful, but can be forced to be overextended later and can be attacked by pieces. It's scary, of course, for black, scarier than without the pawn on e4, but still playable. Uh, black plays the move d6 here, opening up the bishop more importantly, fighting with, uh, uh, fighting against the imminent threat of pawn to e5, and consolidating his position, preparing to castle. In this position, white's main move is queen to d2. And now the main idea uh, after queen to d2 is to castle long, uh, most often, and more importantly, exchange the bishop on h6. In modern defenses, Pirates, modern, King's Indian, uh, you want to exchange the main defender of the Black King. For now, it seems obvious and highly likely that the Black King is going to be castled kingside. Therefore, exchanging the h6 bishop, for example, after Black Castles, which is the most popular move, uh, with the immediate bishop to h6 is a good idea. Uh, however, castling queenside is, is preferred. But Let's say, for example, c6 now, which is a normal Pirates defense and King's Indian defense move. And white plays bishop to h6, uh, black takes, white takes. This is a variation which is very, very common, more than 200 games in this position. White has now weakened the black king significantly, and black is going to have issues defending. Of course, for now, he can't castle. It's, it's quite risky. And black seeks counterplay on the queen side. So the move queen to d2 is very logical. Uh, and the move queen to d2, firstly, as I said, prepares queenside castling, secondly, prepares to exchange the main defender. So white's idea in these lines is to go for a quick attack. Now, this is not the London system. We have transposed into the Pirates defense. I'm going to show you how. So e4 by white uh, is how we enter the Pirates defense. You can watch the playlist on the Pirates on the channel. d6, the Pirates defense. d4, white takes up central space. Black plays knight to f6. White goes knight to c3, these are the main lines of the pirates. g6, and a slightly uncommon move, which can be played though, is bishop to f4. This is a, this is a rare move. Bishop f4 has been played maybe a hundred times, something like that. Far more common is either f4, the Austrian attack, or knight f3, bishop e3, bishop g5, bishop c4. Uh, there are more common moves. However, after bishop to f4, this is still a pirates defense in which c6 is... The most common move. This is a game, if you are interesting, interested in a game which started from the Pirates, uh, Maxim Vashia Legrav was white against uh, Linier Dominguez Perez, uh, and it was quite an interesting game. So, uh, this position is more commonly reached from, reached from the Pirates, but it can be reached from the London system. What's important to note is that we are now in the main line, e4 opening, it's a Pirates defense, we have transposed. Okay, after Queen to d2, Black has two options, c6 and castles. c6 is slightly more common, castles is fine as well. Uh, they are most likely going to transpose, and black will have to play the move c6. Why? Because he wants to start uh, a queenside attack. He wants to open up the queen to look at the a5 square, and he wants to play b5, b4. By this point, it has become apparent that white is going to be castling queenside, and now the move c6 does two things prepares b5, prepares queen a5. Both are very dangerous. And in these positions, it's very important to understand that every tempo counts. If you have any, if you've had any experience with the Sicilian defense from, uh, from the white side playing against the dragon or from the black side playing the dragon, uh, then you know that in opposite side castling uh, with the king side fianchetto, white is usually going to go for f3, g4, h4. Uh, trying to undermine the g6 pawn with h5, and black goes for b5, b4. Both are scary, it's just a question who is faster. In this position, white's best continuation is bishop to h6, and black, of course, now doesn't waste time to take the bishop because his bishop is defended. b5 immediately. White takes, uh, black, of course, takes back. And now f3. The idea behind f3 is not only g4, but once the knight is dislodged with b4, your e4 pawn would be undefended and your game lost. 
black nevertheless continues with b4 and now knight c2 e2 retreating uh, black will continue with queen a5 and white has to play king to b1 now who is faster well that depends on the remaining moves for now both kings are still okay but there could be trouble very early on uh, black's best continuation here is not to continue pushing stuff on the queen side but to break the center open with the move e5 this is just the best way to play and white is going to continue with g4 starting his own attack now i'm going to show you a sample continuation there are no games from this position this is just some of my analysis so let's say c5 which attempts to remove basically white's uh, defenses and if you open up the c file then the c2 square is tender the a2 square is even more tender after something like bishop to e6 now white could try d5 here trying to close down the lines but after d5 uh, this is a very dangerous pawn and i would dare say that black is faster so what i would recommend in positions like these is simply ignore it and go h4 uh, c takes d4 fine you you've just lost the pawn but h5 and it becomes very dangerous for the for the black king the fact that you're a pawn down is completely irrelevant one of the only moves here is rook to h8 and now you take hg6 hg6 Rook takes, king takes, of course, queen to h6 check, and now it's becoming quite deadly, king to g8. Now here is an interesting sacrifice, knight takes d4, and after pawn takes d4, bishop to c4, looking at this diagonal. In this position, white is completely winning, threatening bishop to g6, and the only move is probably d5, but then move the knight, play rook h1, and, and win. So this is a sample continuation of what could happen from this very aggressive period. Or, well, black's mistake of playing bishop to g7. Therefore, after the move knight to c3, bishop g7 is not as popular. This is a very rare sideline which people tend to avoid. Because in most modern openings where white manages to play both e4 and d4, white has a huge amount of space and a very easy play, and very easy play on the king side. And often, uh, black's counterplay is going to be slower than white's play on the king side so remember that if your opponent plays bishop to g7 don't consider this to be a losing mistake you didn't win the game this is not a trick i'll play knight c3 they play bishop g7 i win no you go e4 you take up space but you're now playing against the peers defense and this is still not easy don't waste moves go for h4 h5 immediately uh, start with f3 to defend the e4 pawn play queen to d2 exchange the bishop castle queen side and go for a king side attack so, uh, the theory has shown that black should be stopping the move e4, therefore the most important and the best move is d5. And now white still goes for a very aggressive setup. Uh, he can choose between two moves. Uh, I'm going to show you a sideline first. Queen to d2 is a sideline, which again attempts to castle quickly, exchange the bishop. Very similar to what we saw with bishop to g7, but now you don't have the e4 pawn play. So bishop g7, bishop h6, black castles, you take the bishop and you castle queenside. The difference in this position is that, of course, your pawn is not on e4. That's a huge difference. This pawn is very important in black's counterattack and supported, well, it supports a square for the knight. So a very common idea in some Sicilian's variations is getting the knight into c4. Also, the sacrifices on c3, which are very popular in the Sicilian defense, are going to be more powerful here because this pawn serves as a very nice wedge in white's position so black should attempt to open the position up as soon as possible therefore c5 and white can take but i mean it's better to just support it with e3 first and after knight to c6 uh, you can take now queen to a5 bishop to b5 is a move that has been played simply stopping queen takes pawn but now e5 and now the roles are kind of reversed, uh, black has taken up central space, white is a pawn up, but the black king is in no trouble, to be honest. I mean, h4, h5 is kind of slow, the knight is defending, while at the same time d4 is a very strong threat, a6 to simply win back the c5 pawn, a6, b5, uh, getting the bishop to e6, for example, for black. And these positions get quite messy. I would therefore recommend that after the move d5, you don't play queen to d2 and go for the same plan, even though, of course, it's playable, people have played it, people have won with it, play the move e3. This move is just safer. Supporting the center, you don't really go for a bishop exchange early on. You want to develop castle quicker and or go for a kingside attack quickly. 
Okay, bishop to g7 again, and now here there is only one move for white. This move has been tested by many players. Uh, I have seen it uh, in Simon Williams's video, one of his blitz videos, I think first when he played this. Uh, then I was looking at games in which Karyakin employed this and several other strong players have employed uh, this move, h4. Uh, after h4, it's very hard for uh, for black to defend. So Aronian has had some successful games uh, in this position, Sergei Karyakin, as I said. It's a popular move. It has been played on the highest level. may seem strange to play h4, such an unimportant move, when black is just about to castle, but it's really hard to respond to. Okay, now the best move is by far h5, you have to stop h5. Let's see what happens if black castles. Well, if black castles, again, uh, don't think I'm automatically winning, this is over, black made a mistake. No, you still need to work hard for that win. Uh, granted, the move castles is very risky and by far worse than h5, but it's not over. White, of course, continues with the move h5 himself. Now, taking can be discarded immediately, not because pawn takes or knight takes and rook takes, because, of course, uh, black has the move uh, bishop to g4 if you take with the rook. Bishop g4 forks the rook and the queen, so that wouldn't be good. And if knight takes, well, taking the exchange, uh, giving up the exchange immediately could be fine. And this is very scary, but objectively, if black knows what he's doing, he can survive this and you have given up an exchange. Now, plus one is an advantage, but it's not immediately winning. Therefore, players with black, if you allow the move h5, don't take with the knight because the exchange sack works. There is no bishop to g4. It's not winning, but it's very hard. If you take with the pawn, though, yeah, it's not that clear. Still better for white, but it's not that clear. Instead of rook h5, White simply continues with bishop to d3 and puts pressure on h7. Black needs to seek counterplay with c5 and now bishop to e5, simply trying to get the knight away. And again, we reach a fairly winning position for white after rook takes h5 and a position that's almost impossible to defend. So uh, after castles, uh, if black makes a mistake of castling and h5, Taking isn't advised. The best move is c5, seeking counterplay immediately, but now white opens up the position with takes, h takes, and simply continues knight to f3, you have time, you're going to build up your attack. Play bishop e2, or bishop to d3, castle, play knight g5, play queen to f3, or queen to h3 if you can later on, and basically try to checkmate. So in short, after the move h4, Practice has shown that black is simply forced to play the move h5. Now, why is that important? The move h5 is important because you stop h5 from white. And also, you didn't castle yet. So any crazy ideas like g4 or something like that are not really as powerful because you are not forced to castle. So after the move h5, uh, white has several ideas here. By far the best move, in my opinion, and the trickiest move for black to face is knight to b5. Uh, the alternative is knight to f3, after which black can just castle, you play bishop to e2, he plays c5, and now you play the move which I would recommend as the best move, move 6, knight to b5. The idea is you are basically threatening to win an exchange with knight to c7. So knight to a6, defending c7, c3 completing your pawn triangle, and this is now very much like the London system. Bishop to d7, a4, c4, knight to e5, and white again should be slightly better, but it's not that clear that the move h4 has helped, and I don't know, it's a weakness. It's a weakness because you've given up the g4 square, and bishop g4 or knight g4 are both very dangerous. If you play f3, it's unlikely that you are castling kingside, so this is not a variation I would recommend. So after h5, I think you should go for a much more direct approach with knight b5 immediately, knight to a6 and now bishop to e2. Bishop to e2 is a very nice idea because it supports an early g4 as opposed to uh, playing the move knight to f3. Now in this position black would castle uh, first and then you could transpose with knight to f3 but I'm of the opinion that there is something uh, with f3 g4 here which is completely unsound. Uh, according to the engines if you go f3 here 
black is already much better after uh, after c6 it's minus one but it's really hard to prove and try to well i would advise you to analyze the positions uh starting with f3 with your king still in the center because there could be some venom there after knight to b5 though uh, knight to a6 uh, has to be played so let's see what happens here after h4 h5 has to be played and now knight f3 uh the most common move Bishop to e2 is also a very common move. Knight to b5, believe it or not, has only been played 11 times. And after knight to a6, knight to f3 has been the continuation, and c6 chasing the knight away. Now, after knight to c3, again, you have sort of a normal London system. So these are the ideas. And uh, black is the one that has to be careful. Uh, black is the one who can be in more trouble. It's questionable, again, whether this move was necessary or not, whether you've gotten something after h5, because g4 is weak. Uh, on the other hand, g5 is weak for black. So the positions more, most commonly continued with knight c7 for black, or knight to b8. Bishop f5 has also been played, and in practice, black does quite well here. Uh, the position is, as you can see, minus 0.3, equal or slightly, slightly better for black. So knight to b5 is provocative, I think best, because you induce weaknesses. This knight is not a good piece. It's going to need some time to read out back. Either knight c7, knight e6, or knight b8, knight e7. So the piece is kind of offside. As I said, knight f3 is more most popular among grandmasters and positions continue like this. So castles, bishop e2, c5. This move is crucial for black. Striking with c5 when the knight is on c3 is very important because white doesn't have his London system bishop, so basically his London system pawn structure. So basically you're provoking white into weakening himself. And if pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, uh, and black can play the move e5 when it's defended having a broad center, that's very good. Knight b5 here. Knight to a6, c3, creating the pawn chain. Bishop to d7, attacking the knight. a4, c4, and knight to e5. Bishop takes b5, a takes b5, knight c7 is the main line. In which white has a very solid pawn structure, a good knight on e5, a weak pawn on b5, and basically has to start an attack here. So in this position we are going to focus on slightly before we move on uh, to white's second option instead of knight to c3. Here's something I'd like to say. Uh, when you play these positions with knight to c3, and this is something you can expect on the highest level. If both you and your opponent play the theoretical best moves up to move 12 or 13, the point at which we are here, you're going to have to be very brave to play this posi these positions with both colors. The main move here, of course, uh, is g4. There is no other move here. You have nothing else in the position g4. And black doesn't really have an option. Um, let's turn on the engine. I would like to show you what happens here. White is about plus one. If black allows, let's say black plays rook to c8, which is a passive move, and you open the position up, at any point when this file gets open, it becomes very scary. Firstly, you are losing a pawn because, well, whatever you take with, I have, I have two defenders, so that would be scary. Even if the pawn was defended, opening up the g file can become very deadly very quickly with this knight installed on e5. So basically after the move g4, black only has one option he has to take. And after h takes g4, bishop takes g4, I hope you can see the threat now. Uh, the threat would be h5 because the g5 square is defended. After h5 there would be no g5. So black's best option is try to go for exchanges. Knight g4, queen g4 and queen to c8 offering a trade and queen g3 of course declining. So now Again, the engines are going to say that white is slightly better. Black can, of course, win a pawn on b5, but that would be suicidal. What black has to do here is defend, 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 queen to f5. And again, white just continues with h5. Even though it's hanging a pawn, you just continue with h5. You want to open the position up. Of course, the knight is looking at g6 as well, so black has to take. You have given up a pawn, but look at this position. Castle's queen side. This is very, very dangerous. So this is the kind of stuff you get after the move knight to c3. And after knight c3, again, remember, as black play d5 as white, I would recommend positions with e3, bishop g7, h4, as black remember to play h5, but also note that it's not easy to survive even if you play the best moves. So knight c3, very aggressive, very good, uh, double-edged, and in my opinion, better for white. Now, let's look at the second option, pawn to e3. 
Pawn to e3 is what white plays instead of knight to c3. This has been one of the main setups for a long time, uh, ever, si ever since the London system was first played in the 20s. And of course, you'd start with knight f3 first, but it's basically the same thing. So after bishop to g7, knight to f3, this is a position that's been on boards of top players in the 20s, 30s, and whatever. Black, of course, castles here or goes for d6. It's going to transpose most often. Uh, we can have a look at d6 first. I would just like to show you one sideline. Here, the main move is h3. The reason why h3 is played is that you want to stop knight h5 and you basically want to save your dark squared bishop. Your bishop on f4, your London system bishop is a very good piece. So h3 is played. We are going to have a look at those lines, which are the main lines. But, but bishop to e2 has to be mentioned. And this is a game between Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces, Maxim Bashi Legrave with black. And just to give you an idea of a forcing line that you basically have to know, uh, which starts with knight to h5. So with the move knight h5, uh, black wins the bishop pair. That's that's it. Black is going to win the bishop pair by force, but you need to know three or four moves which are to follow because that's just the best way for both colors to play. Bishop to g5, you don't want to allow the immediate capture. h6, chasing the bishop away. Bishop to h4, g5. And now that all seems very normal, but the natural move which most people would play here is bishop to g3. That's just inferior to what... Uh, what's played on the highest levels and what's theoretical, and that's knight f to d2. You're basically attacking the knight and uh, black is attacking your bishop. So if pawn takes bishop, white is simply better on this diagonal. This is huge pressure on f7. So black doesn't allow that, of course. Black plays the move knight to f4. And now g2 is threatened, the bishop is threatened. If you retreat, the bishop knight takes g2 and black is, of course, winning. So you take the knight, he takes the bishop, and the position continues c3, defending d4, c5, attacking d4. And now d takes, d takes, knight to a3, trying to finish development, and black simply castles. Now, who is better here? I would choose to be white. If I had to choose, if I had the choice, I wouldn't play this position with either color. Very tricky. Magnus Carlsen went on to win. Uh, check out that game uh, to see his plans. I wouldn't want to focus on this sideline too much. But just know that after the move d6 or after castles, h3 is the main idea to avoid these kind of lines. So, okay, let's castle first. We are going to get into those positions later. Here, bishop e2 or h3 can be played. Uh, the difference is that without d6, it's kind of hard for... Uh, for black to do anything because if you go, let's say, bishop to e2, knight h5 in this position, there's also the option of bishop to e5, uh, and bishop to g5 is slightly different as well. So white has several other options, so knight h5 is not as popular, but you can, of course, play h3 and then bishop to e2, it's fine. My advice would, in fact, be to, after knight f3 castles, play the move h3 and only then bishop to e2, d6, uh, I'm sorry, bishop to e2, and we have transposed, it's basically the same position. Now, uh, in King's Indian types of setups, black 6 counterplay with c5 and e5. In this position, of course, e5 is kind of bad move uh, because just d takes. But c5 opens the center up favorably, and uh, the reason for that is this diagonal for the bishop. If you've ever played the Grunfeld or the King's Indian or the Benoni or any position with a bishop on g7, you will know that c5 is a powerful move and if d takes c5 is played then there could be trouble so c5 d takes c5 i mean maybe even knight h5 immediately simply to ruin the pawn structure knight h5 knight c3 knight takes f4 and black should be better i mean you're threatening to win a rook so white basically never wants to take c5 is a safe way to break open the position but since we play d3 we didn't play knight c3, we now have the option to play c3. And now white is playing a normal London system setup. Here, uh, black can go for either queen b6 or b6. We are going to continue with the main line. But first, let me show you two alternatives for black. Uh, black doesn't have to go for c5, which is the best move and the most active move. Black can choose knight bd7 or b6 as well, sort of going for a double fianchetto hippo setup or something like that with b6. And knight b to d7 playing a sort of king's Indian uh, because knight b to d7 is a bit more common and maybe reinforcing the move e5. 
The idea behind knight b to d7, a move which we are going to look at first, is that c5 is a break you could play, but e5 is much more likely, and after something like rook to e8 or queen to e8, you can basically play e5 without being punished. White castles, black plays queen to e8. And now uh, you play c4 as white. This now makes, well, makes c5 a kind of weird move because knight c3. Uh, is a move that can be played. Knight, the knight now has a great square. Uh, and e5 is the move that's kind of scary. So instead of c4, white could have retreated the bishop back to h2. That's a normal move. That's uh, something you play as black against the Reti very often, against these positions with the kingside fianchetto. So you could have retreated the bishop on the last move. In this position, after e5, you play bishop h2 now. Note that e4 is not a good move. It would close down the center to white's advantage, and after knight to d2, this pawn would be very, very hard to defend. So knight e4, uh, getting into central squares and making it harder to play knight to c3. So knight b to d2. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2. And we kind of have a reti in reverse, uh, a position where... White plays a Queen's Indianish setup uh, with the only difference is that the pawn is on h2 instead of b2. So if you imagine the pawn on b3 uh, and the bishop on b2, that would be a Queen's Indian in reverse for white. In this position, you could argue where the bishop is better. I'd, to be honest, prefer the bishop on b2. But this is still okay. And as I said, sort of a reti in reverse, a fine position for both sides. Not too challenging for white. Therefore, after h3, knight b to d7 is an okay move, but it's not the most tactical. Same goes for b6, going for a queenside fianchetto, white castles, bishop to b7. a4 is a very important move. You want to play a5 and weaken the queenside structure. So black should play either a5 or a6. a6 is better. Knight b to d2. Uh, you don't really want to play knight to c3 because you want to play c3. You know that either e5 or c, c5 or e5 are coming. You want to meet that with c3. So knight b to d7. Bishop to h2 in anticipation of e5. As I said, very important move. Rook e8 still reinforcing e5. c3, e5. Now white's best continuation is b4, simply going for queenside space. Again, you are not really afraid uh, of the move e4 in this position. If e4 is played here, well, let's just turn on the engine. If e4 is played here, I mean, you obviously don't have a better way to deal with that. If you go uh, if you go knight to g5, then uh, d5 can be played and your knight is lost on the next turn. So you have to go back. But again, this pawn blocks in the bishop, so I'm not a big fan of the move. You're not afraid of e4. The main move is queen to e7 and simply going uh, uh, simply going for centralization and you want to connect your rooks. So b6 and knight b to d7, not the most active. As I said, c5, best move. Breaking the center immediately. d takes c5 would be deadly. White doesn't want to do that. So c3. And now b6 or queen b6 uh, are both good moves. Queen b6 is better. If b6, this is sort of going into... Uh, d5 lines of the of the London with the pawn on d6. This is a very common setup against the London after d5. Uh, castles, bishop b7, knight bd2, knight bd7, all very normal. Whenever knight b2 d7 is played, consider bishop h2 in anticipation of e5. Queen c7. Now white starts a counterattack. a4. Why not? Gain space. a6. Again, you want to be able to meet a5 with b5. That's very important. If a6 is not played, let's say you play rook to e8, then a5 is very, very hard to meet. If you go b5 here, well, I can, I can take it. And if you don't go b5, well, a6. Or taking, but a6 is probably more active, chasing the bishop away. Uh, so you want to go a6. White now continues queen to b3, and now this is the setup you'll be playing again. Fine for both sides. I'd prefer white in this position because of the very, very solid central pawn structure. Your bad bishop is outside of the pawn chain, you're not struggling. Your light squared bishop on e2 is very good. On the other hand, these king's Indian positions have a huge advantage to normal d5, and that's the fact that the pawn is on d6. So you don't have knight e5. Fianchetto positions have a big advantage that you don't have e4. It's very hard to play, defend it twice. So b6 is okay. Queen b6, though, is more active. Queen b6 pokes at the main weakness in the London system, the b2 pawn. So queen b3. Always meet queen b6 with queen b3. 
Bishop to e6 attacking the queen, forcing an exchange. Usually when the pawn is on d5, of course, that's done with c4. But now when the pawn is on d6, you have bishop e6. And now queen takes b6 is forced. A takes b6. White plays a3. And now going for the same sort of attack, of course, is not possible because the bishop or, or nothing is defending the b5 pawn. So you cannot play b5 because bishop takes b5. So knight to c6. Knight b to d2, knight to a5, looking at those weaknesses. And of course, white pawns being on dark squares have made holes on light squares. But you can control that. You still have a bishop and a knight defending. So for example, castles, rook fc8, rook fe1, knight b3, knight takes, bishop takes, knight to d2, chasing the bishop away, and bishop to e6 is something you can expect. This position uh, I really like for white. Uh, I really like it for white because the pawn structure is intact. You have two marvelous bishops. I would say that your dark squared bishop is much better than black's. I would say that your knight's is, knight is as equal as black's and that your rooks are the same. But you should have a slight edge, double b pawns. And basically you cannot play for an attack, but you have a slight edge and cannot be worse unless you blunder. So this is what you get after e3. So to conclude, uh, against king's indian setups for black knight c3 or e3 it's basically the choice between a tactical game or a positional most likely late middle game or end game with the queens traded off um, i would recommend playing knight c3 is just more active uh, again your choice uh, i would recommend that you know both moves so that you can adjust to your opponent but enough one will be enough probably to play against the king's india okay thanks for watching we've covered the second most common setup black can play against the london system tomorrow we are going to continue so stay tuned for more chess and uh, please let me know what you think about this video and if i could have done something better please let me know thank you bye bye